Kalapursha and Upachaya and Karaka. This is what the combination I am going to take. So all of you know about six and house, eighth houses. So we consider we were to observe these houses keenly. We can find some astral, astonishing results. Generally, six and eighth lots we consider as bad. So in the chart, not considered good and are treated as malefic houses. Planets situated in these houses also considered bad. This is what generally we do. It is assumed that the result of the house whose lord is situated in sixth or eighth house is spoiled. That means sixth lord position eighth house, eighth lord position sixth house, or these lords position any other any other house is also considered bad. And same way with sixth and eighth houses, from any house are two considered to be bad for that house. Any bhava you take from that bhava, sixth and eighth lords are not good. Now we shall see the result the relation of sixth and eighth lot. I will show you some interesting relationship between sixth and eighth houses. When all of us we know, but we never look into that aspect. That's all. It's not that something new or you know great thing uh, I'm going to talk about. But everybody, every one of us know. But when you look at it in that angle, then you will understand why the the particular concept has come. So we, for this we need uh, natural natural zodiac. So I am taking the natural zodiac. See Kala Purusha. So Kala Purusha, I have taken from Aries to Pisces, one to twelve houses. Now each house I am going to uh, uh, a few things which we consider bhavas that I am going to talk about. For example, first consider the fifth house. Fifth house we generally consider it for progeny, right? Who is the who is the Karaka for progeny? Jupiter. If you count from fifth house. The eighth house is going to be Pisces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth house is Pisces. The Lord of Pisces is Jupiter. So that is an interesting fact. Fifth house we consider as natural Karaka Jupiter, but he is the eighth Lord from its position. So if you take any house, that Lord is going to be the Karaka from the sixth house from it. So from Pisces, if you take one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, the sixth house is uh, Leo. From from Pisces, the sixth house is Leo, and actually from Lagna it is the fifth house. So the Karaka for fifth house is the twelfth house. Our natural zodiac, the twelfth lord Jupiter. So Jupiter is the natural Karaka for progeny. So he is the house lord from the fifth house. That is eighth house from the fifth house is the house lord. So he is the Karaka. In other way, Pisces. That is uh, Pisces, Lord, Pisces Lord Jupiter. He is going to be the Karaka for the sixth house from its position. That is what I wanted to establish. One by one, we'll let us see. I'll take, let's take another example. Now say seventh house. Seventh house is with general Karaka. What we look at is marriage. Who is Karaka for marriage? Venus. So if you look at it from the seventh house, the eighth house is second house from Lagna. Who is the Lord of that house? Taras is Venus. So the Karaka is Venus. So again, see, marriage is the Karakatva, the Karaka is Venus. He is the eighth lord from its position. Similarly, Venus being the lord of that house, he is the Karaka to the sixth house from its position. That is what, again, I established. One more example, let us take. Twelfth house is for bed comforts, everybody talks about, right? So who is the Karaka? Karaka is for Venus. So if you look at it, 
from the 12th house that is Pisces the 8th house is again Libra the Lord of Libra is Venus so Venus is a natural karaka for bed comforts so again Venus becomes the karaka for bed comforts from its uh, 6th house from its position natural position now let's take another example 10th house 10th house is for karma karma house and profession and all we talk about right so if you take 10th house it is talks about authority also so who is the law who is the karaka for authority is sun if you look at it from the 10th house natural 10th house capricorn the 8th house is leo the karaka is sun so that is how it is established let's see another example here uh, second house we talk about family kutumbasthana etc right so if you look at it from the second house the eighth house is sagittarius the lord is Kar uh, jupiter jupiter is the karaka for family kutumba etc let's see another example eleventh house we talk about gains income etc right so when you look at it from the eighth house, the eighth lord, eighth house lord is Mercury. He is the Karaka. So eleventh house is uh, Aquarius in natural zodiac. From there, the eighth house is our natural sixth house from the uh, Aries lagna, and he is the uh, Mercury is the lord of that house. He is the Karaka for income. Now one more thing is, if you take ninth house, Bhagya, Luck, and all, from the ninth house, if you look at the eighth house, the lord is Moon. So mood is the natural karaka for bhagya and luck. And one more example is lagna, the personality. So lagna, lagna personality. So you take the eighth lord from it is Mars. So Mars is very powerful personality, right? So eighth house lord is Mars and he is the karaka for lagna and <coughs> for personality kind of thing, personality development overall personality mars is the karaka these are all what i just told an example or natural karakas which we generally learn in our initial or beginning classes or in uh, pravina one etc etc the same thing i established here using the relationship between the sixth and eighth houses and their lots hope it is interesting now <clears throat> what do these houses uh, denote the karaka for the result of any house is denoted by eighth house from any house so what we learned here is the karaka for the result of any house is denoted by the eighth house from any house so we can say that the lord of any house is a natural in the natural chart is natural karaka for the sixth house from it so that's what i just showed you in the examples so now we will see that the nupacha houses from any house have any relation you see now it means considering the Karaka house, then the Upachaya Asthana from it. Now we understand the sixth, the, the Bhava and the Karaka for that Bhava we understand. Now from there we have to observe the Upachaya houses. That is what is the another concept which I am going to talk about. First take the Bhava and find out the Karaka from the Bhava. From there you have to take the Upachaya houses and understand how that particular Bhava is going to be. Uh, fructified or give good results or bad results or whatever it is okay so for marriage we consider seventh house so second house is the karaka as we know see in the natural zodiac marriage is considered seventh house which is libra from aries lagna libra venus is the karaka who is the second house lord because he is the eighth lord from the marriage karaka from the libra from the libra the eighth house is taurus and the lord is venus he is the karaka for marriage so from the Karaka, you have to see the Upachaya houses. From the Karaka, the third house, which is the fourth house, sixth house, which is the seventh house, tenth house, which is the eleventh house, and twelfth, eleventh house is the twelfth house. What I am talking is here I have taken the natural zodiac, the Lagna is Aries, and we are talking about one bhava that is about a marriage. So from, from marriage, the house, the house, the seventh house is representing the Kar Karakatva marriage. So who is the Karaka for that marriage is Venus. He is the eighth lord from its position. So seventh house to eighth house is the second house, right? Seventh house to eighth, from eighth house from seventh house is the second house from the Lagna. 
whichever lagna here i have taken example as air is lagna for easy understanding kala purusha so the is the is the karaka for that now we have to identify the upachaya houses from that karaka and then i and keep them and see how they are whether they are giving us the growth or not will be decided this is another way of using upachaya houses not just one uh, three three six ten eleven from the lagna i am talking about each bhava first identify the karakatva of that bhava find out the karaka for that bhava and then identify the upachaya houses from the karaka and then analyze then you will know the results which are definitely going to be very interesting i hope i am clear on this concept which i am going to show with some examples in future slides now the marriage is the most common event in human life now we will see that role upacha houses uh, from seventh seventh house please the upacha houses from seventh house so we will take sixth and tenth houses from seventh house if you take sixth house from seventh house it is a twelfth house if you take the tenth house from seventh house that is a fourth house that is in your natural zodiac the fourth and twelfth houses are going to be the sixth and tenth houses from the seventh house when you, when we go back and see this example here lagna <coughs> is aries the seventh house is libra from libra if you take the sixth house 1 2 3 4 5 6 the 12th house natural zodiac the 12th house pisces is going to be the sixth house which is the which is the actual 12th house and 7 8 9 10 house from 7th house the 10th house is natural 4th house from the lagna so this is what uh, i was trying to establish in this slide so the observation is more than 50% of marriage are performed in the antardasa of lots of fourth and twelfth houses so either the, the lot of fourth house or lot of twelfth house right in the antardasa of that whatever dasa is going on but the marriage would have been performed during the antardasa of that uh, natives sixth and tenth lots from the seventh house which are the natural which are the twelfth and fourth houses from the natal horoscope of the native during the antardasa of that uh, period most of the natives are going to be married at least 50% are taking place in that aspect maybe you all can check your marriage when it happened are you one of them or not i am i am not saying 100% i am saying 50% so majority of us will come maybe some of us may not come so let i will i will talk about a few more points maybe in that we might we might come in, come under that particular category now apply the same phenomenon to every house we will find the upachaya sthana from that karaka sthana of any house plays very important role in finding the timing of the event so any bhava you wanted to understand what is the timing of approximate timing of that event what you can do is identify the bhava and identify the karaka for that bhava and then identify the upachaya sthanas from that bhava right so from that bhava you take from that bhava you take whichever bhava you want to assess in the previous example we have talked about seventh house and marriage so suppose you talk about fifth house and progeny so from the fifth house you have to consider the sixth and tenth houses from the fifth house you have to consider the sixth house upachaya houses from the fifth house sixth house is going to be 5 6 7 8 9 10 that is the tenth house from fifth house is going to be the sixth house and then tenth house from fifth house is going to be the third house uh, second house second or third house third 11 12 yeah second house so you have to consider those two houses to understand how the progeny is going to be for the native and how their uh, growth all those things can be considered like this you have to do it this is one concept which uh, i i have i have done some research and point find out some good results now let us see the same thing i put it in a table here so what i have done is for your under, for your understanding i repeat it again the below table will illustrate this principle in clear is clearly the focus house is denoted by b house a is the eighth from b and forms the karaka for that house the upachaya house from the karaka house eighth column a or third denoted by column d denoted by column b 10th denoted by c and 11th denoted by column d 
see if i uh, explain the first one then you understand the remaining one marriage we consider the focus house is seventh house that is what column b is mentioning here column b is the karaka of the karakatva of the house marriage is the karakatva we are looking at it so it is the seventh house from the seventh house the eighth house lord is the karaka he is the second house that is denoted under a table a so focus house is our seventh house is focus focus point is marriage the focus house is seventh house in natural zodiac i am using natural zodiac only you apply later for other horoscopes do the seventh house is for marriage the karaka for that seventh house is eighth house eighth eighth lord from there which is the second house in natural ka natural zodiac the second lord is venus so that is what represented by a now from the second house you have to take the upachaya houses from the karaka you have to take the upachaya houses so they are denoted third is denoted by column d column d that is from the karaka second house from the second house the third house is actual fourth house if you count 2 3 4 the third house from second house is actual fourth house that is the third upachaya third upachaya sthana and then sixth upachaya sthana is column denoted by again the same same uh, focus house lord is going to be the or focus house and focus house lord are going to be the second upachaya house and upachaya lord that is sixth and the third that is the 10th is represented by 11th house from the second house from the second natural natural zodiac from the second house because he is the karaka from there the 10th house is going to be the 11th house from there the 11th house is going to be the 12th house so the 3 6 10 11 11 are indicated under the headings of d b c d i i have uh, i put it you can change the table however uh, format you want but this is the table which i used so you can see another example see children children again fifth house the karaka for fifth house is the 12th lord which is jupiter so from karaka jupiter 12th lord the second house is the first upachaya house and the fifth house is second upachaya house and the ninth house is third upachaya house and the 10th house is the fourth upachaya house so this is how you can actually consider the karakatvas and karakas and upachaya sthanas from there and and how it is going to be so even you, you can apply after this you can apply from that bhava the sixth house from that bhava the 10th house lots in their antardasa the result may native may get result in their antardasa for example children again i am coming back to the same example you take fifth house is the progeny that the 12th lord jupiter eighth house from there is jupiter the lord the upachaya sthanas are from karaka see uh, the, now upachaya sthanas are we have taken now now take the bhava from the bhava you take the 6th and 12th house so at 6th and 10th house from the bhava from 5th and 6th house from 5th house the 6th house is uh 5th 6th 7th 8th 9th 10th the 10th house is the 6th house and second house is so in the antardasa of that 10th lord or in the antardasa of that second lord the progeny will take place for the native at the time of right you can apply transit also on this and then you can confirm surely that he will be benefited during this particular dasa or antardasa right next i hope i am give explaining you clearly about the concept which i am talking about that is the 6th house 8th house the uh, karakatva karaka and upachaya houses from there and the fructification of approximate time of that particular bhava these are the four points which i have been talking last 15 minutes now an a maximum of up to 40% of the cases the marriages were performed in the antardasa of the lots of fourth or twelfth house even if there was no involvement with the seventh house see when the when the marriages are taking place during the seventh uh, house lord uh, that is at fourth house lord or twelfth house lord there may there may not be seventh lord or seventh house involvement remember not necessarily seventh lord and seventh house involvement is to be there it is not necessary so there was no direct relation of the of these houses with seventh house seventh house there is no connection but still lot of marriages are performing during this period 
the 12th house is the 6th from 7th house and 4th house is 10th from 7th house, which we know already. In the 15% of cases, the marriage were performed in the antaradasa of planets situated in the 4th and 12th houses. Earlier, we talked about the marriage were performed during the lots of those desas. That is the 4th lord antaradasa or 12th lord antaradasa. I said 50% of us used to come under that category, but some of us, if we have not come under that category, now consider this. That is the planet posited in the fourth house in the twelfth uh, house, okay, from the natural zodiac, which are the sixth and tenth houses from the seventh house. Any planets are posited probably in those planets under the sun, the marriage might have been taken place. That is only the cons, the percent is only 15 percent, but that is another way of looking at it. If the house lord under the sun is not giving the result, then the planets posited in that house. Antarla, Antardasa of that planet, which is posted in the 4th house or 12th house, also sometimes giving results of marriage. Another point is, uh, Antardasa of the planet situated in the 4th and 12th house with four or more benefic windows in Vinnashtakvarga of that planet. So you have to consider Ashtakavarga also now along with this. So I repeat, 15% of the cases, the marriages were performed in the antardasa of the planet situated in those 4th and 12th houses, provided those planets have more than 4 bindus in their Vinnashtakavarga. That is what you have to consider. Now, the same case studies, in the same case studies, the marriage of 55% people having Aries Lagna were performed in the antardasa of Moon, the 4th Lord or Jupiter, the 9th and 12th Lord. And the Mahadasa Lord seemed to be the least factor in the timing of the event. This is another observation. So not necessary need to be, you know, uh, uh, come, come true in all the cases. It is an observation. Some percentage also given. This is an approximate percentage. 55% of the people whose marriage is performed in the Antardasya of Moon or Jupiter provided their Lagna is Aries. Because for Aries, the fourth house is the Moon. And for Aries, the ninth and twelfth, the twelfth house is Jupiter. So either in the fourth house or in the twelfth house uh, lots under this, uh, it is performed. This is another observation with regard to Upachayasthanas. Upachayasthanas are, see, if you take Aries, the seventh house, Libra is the seventh house. From there, the sixth house is twelfth house. From there, the tenth house is fourth house. That is what the connection with Upachayasthanas. Right. Now, this is another observation. See, out of these 12 lagnas, only four cases did the marriage significators have lordship of the seventh house, which could be nothing more than a coincidence. Actually, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter, only these, these planets have got seventh lordship. In all other cases, the seventh lordship uh, are connected. See, see, these significators are highlighted in red in the table, and they also have lordship of one of the houses either in the fourth or twelfth house. See, just now we talked about the fourth house and twelfth house planets, the Antardesa, the marriage took place for most of them. It, it coincided with the seventh Lord Dasa only in these cases, that is Venus, Mars, and Jupiter. Only in these cases it is coincided, but in rest of the places they are not coincided with seventh Lord, but they, they become either fourth Lord or twelfth Lord. That is what the observation in this table. I just talked about 50% of marriage, right? That point I have been trying to prove here. It is not, the most of the marriages are not coincided with 7th Lord's Desa. Only in the case of Venus, Mars and Jupiter, which also have, you know, 4th Lord or 12th uh, or some other Lordship, either 4th or 12th Lordship with them. So that is where, you know, they are connected. Otherwise, 7th Lord, or seventh house is not involved in the marriage of using this particular concept in those people who have done this. The percentage may vary here and there. Please do not uh, take it as exactly. I try to give the major. I try to you know establish the point that you know majority of cases it's happening like this. Now another point. See any planet receiving more windows in the first. Uh, that is selected above. Whichever bhava we are selecting, that is the first. So, 6th and 10th houses from it in Astrakavarga will definitely give benefit reason. 
now i am connecting this upachaya houses with ashtaka varga that is what you have to observe and understand you take any bhava for example you take uh, progeny fifth house for easy understanding i am telling fifth house so that is about from the fifth house the sixth house is the tenth house from the fifth house that uh, the tenth house is the second house so if there are benefic if the ashtaka varga of these planets if they have got better um, uh, bindus then definitely the result will come on in the under antardas of that particular planet this formula can be applied to all other houses using each one of them as the first starting point and studying the first six and ten houses from that point take the bhava consider it as a first house take the bhava consider that house as the first house and take the sixth house from that bhava take the tenth house from that bhava and then analyze and then analyze so similarly planets located in the third and 11th houses from these houses house under consideration with more or four bindus see any planet is having four or more bindus in in its vinnashtaka varga then definitely their result is going to be favorable to the native so you can consider third and 11th houses and their lots and their ashtaka varga points of those lots the third and 11th houses from that bhava okay the key concept for finding the timing of event for any instant of life is based on this formula so you can actually use this formula and understand the fructification of that particular event whether it's fully fructiful or partly partly fructiful whatever it is or not going to that you can decide using this formula also by figuring out the third sixth tenth and eleventh houses from that starting point the planet that gets the highest bindus in these houses is the significator planet that gives the results in its antardasa as it relates to the first house starting point whatever bhava you are taking considering that as first house consider the third sixth tenth eleventh houses and identify which planet is having highest bindus that planet is going to play an important role in that particular native's life with regard to that particular bhava i repeat consider any bhava and then identify the upachaya sthanas from there take the lots of those upachaya sthanas considered from the particular bhava check the ashtaka varga bindus for those each planet represented by or owners of 3rd 6th 10th 11th houses whichever planet is having highest bindus that planet plays an important role in fructifying the karaka karakatva of that particular bhava which you have chosen right next this now see if we try to interpret the results of any house by using standard methods we will not be able to see the results accurately in majority of the cases great uh, greater accuracy can be obtained by using the method of upasaya houses so when you look at it you will not be able to predict suppose in some cases it is difficult to predict then you can use this method which i just now discussed and repeated then you will you will have better understanding and better clarity while giving the prediction so by this fact will be self explanatory when we present some example however when using the upachaya method the accuracy level becomes much more efficient and greatly increased by uh, itself up to 90% so the upachaya houses have been distinguished as main and secondary the upachaya houses 3 6 10 11 have been distinguished into primary and secondary 6th and 10th houses are going to be primary and 3rd and 11th are going to be secondary so secondary upachaya houses act only through their lots and planets located in these houses uh, main upachaya houses on the other hand are directly involved in the outcome of the result so that is what you have to consider i request all the uh, participants of this particular seminar to observe this and then uh, confirm yourself whether it is working or not the primary upachaya houses are 6th and 10th the secondary upachaya houses are 3rd and 11th so i have given for each for each lagna i have given here in the table now events of life as indicated by each house and its upachaya houses so if you take a bhava each house is uh, the the birth of a child for example again again same example because i am trying to use the same example because i wanted to make you understand the concept clearly so that uh, 
you can apply that to once you understand the concept then you can apply that to any bhava so the birth of a child is a factor of fifth house fifth house is the uh, uh, what do you call karakatva for giving birth to a child along with 12th second 9th 10th house so these are the upachaya sthanas 12th house second house 9th house and 10th house are the upachaya sthanas from the karaka from the karaka right the newly the as the second house denotes the family members of the and relatives as 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 we know general karakas second house denotes family members and relatives so there is an increase in the family members so as soon as the child is born so there is an increase so that is why people say you know uh, after, uh, uh, when whenever jupiter comes into the second house from your moon based on the age of the native you can actually predict what good is going to happen in the native suppose native is just finished his gradia education he will get a job if he is if he is not married he will get married approximately during that time or he is already married there is a possibility of having a child so this is how you have to predict based on the age if he has all these things then you can predict a promotion in the job or a financial gain or buying a property or buying a vehicle all these things can be considered based on the age and other factors okay a newly born child will also change the relationship as the male now becomes the father and the female becomes mother therefore the status is also changed and it can be said that the 10th house is also affected by this now the 9th house indicates the continuation of heritage and its heirs so that is also connected to upachaya houses the 12th house indicates the mating of male and the female without which any child can be born through natural means i am not talking about test tube babies etc okay so this is how you have to interpret the same example we look at it here now so instead of looking at the fifth house first consider the child to be the result of the 12th house because mating is very important so to take the 12th house so from the 12th house you take upachaya sthanas the third 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 house from 12th house is the actual actual third house the okay from the 12th house that is the uh, that we are considering now is the is the result of the child the third house is the natural second house and uh, sixth house is a natural fifth house and 10th uh, house is a natural 10 uh, 9th house and 11th uh, house is a natural 10th house from this particular position given in this example here you see the red markings red numbering are actual house numbers the blue number with the bigger size or the actual upachaya houses from the considering house that is the 12th house we then see that the 5th house is the 6th house from the 12th house as noted in blue so similarly the 9th house is the 10th house from 12th house 2nd house is the 10th from 3rd and 11th house is from 12th so thus the birth of a child using the upachaya method is a factor of the 12th 2nd 5th and 9th 10th houses so not only this any bhava you want to consider you consider this way so all the above houses play a key role in the timing of an event and must be considered if any of these houses do not contribute then it will be difficult to have a child that is what you have to uh, remember if any of these three any of these upachaya houses are not able to contribute then it is difficult for them to have a child so that you can actually you can also find out the other ways you know by looking at the chart and then you can confirm this is a double confirm and you know uh, a strong point you can discuss with the native the lots of the third and 11th houses are from the 12th mean that the lots of the second and 10th houses play a vital role similarly any planet in the second and 12th houses with four four bindus in ashtaka varga also play an important role so in order to determine a timed event that focuses on children or child birth one should consider the 12th house and upachaya houses from it that is what i wanted to establish here now upachaya houses and another new concept of finding the results do not get the following house meaning mixed up with what you know normally we know certain karakatvas of the first house second house third house and all but these are not the karakatvas of the first house second house what we know okay general karakatvas of first house sixth house second house third house and all that we are not applying here what we are taking is 
these meanings will be equivalent to the six toes from itself as they are being viewed from the perspective of putya houses suppose if you are talking about the first toes you have to consider the six toes from it so for example aries first toes we are talking but you have to consider it as virgo the the points what we are i'm going to discuss now or explain now are the six toes from that sthana fix the fixed uh, six toes from that sthana what whichever bhava you are taking that the results what i am talking now or the karakatvas i am talking now are connected to the six toes from it only not that house okay first house from the first house and its upachaya house you see now uh, think six toes when you read the first house think uh, second house when you read uh, think second seventh house when you read the seventh house and so on when i read first house it is about the sixth house when i read the second house then it is the results of the seventh house when i read the third house it is the results of the eighth house and so on that's why you have to take okay first house from the first house and its upachaya houses the case the capacity of the person the capability of doing one's own business service line of business social status category of the uh, in the service etc and the time timing of event of such various matters can be properly is assessed that means you you have to take when i talk about the first house you have to take the sixth house right from the sixth house you take the again upachaya sthanas and apply these things okay so don't get confused when you get the presentation you listen carefully also you read it carefully then you understand i think here you require a couple of times the either the listening or the reading of the material second house from the second house which is the seventh house we are talking about actually the karakatvas of second house from the second house its upachaya houses the marriage the happiness of conflict so what can we infer from this that is what i am trying to tell so you wanted to know the marriage of the native or capability of the native then the first house capability in the sense the as a person what can he what he can do what business he can do how can he do the service etc etc personality the second house from the uh, from the second house you can actually take the seventh house as the results of the seventh house which are talking about marriage happiness from that house upachaya house sthanas from that house upachaya sthanas this we have already considered if you go back to the example i told you seventh house is the uh, bhava for marriage from there we have taken upachaya sthanas the third from there we have taken the upachaya sthanas third sixth the 10th 11th houses from that house so that is what again i am telling so they are indicating the second house means the seventh house indicating it's a, uh, that house and upachaya sthanas are indicating marriage the happiness or conflicts in the mind married life number of marriages unmarried state friendships with the composite comp sex and timing of events all these matters can be judged so these are the actual the points what are the things you can judge or to know a particular bhava which house you have to look at and which upachaya sthanas you have to look at that is what this is what this particular slide and the coming slides are going to explain now the third house from the third house you can actually and their upachaya houses the longevity and the health of the native can be judged along with timing of events also we can find out now go to fourth house fourth house when when i am talking about fourth house which house it is the ninth house right which is the nine, sixth house from it four five six seven eight nine sixth house so from this sixth house you have to consider for these things from the fourth house and its upachaya houses so when you want to know the luck luck factor you have to go to the natural ninth house from there you have to take the upachaya sthanas the third house the sixth house the tenth house and eleventh house and also timing of event can be find out fourth house and its upachaya sthana the luck factor favorable or unfavorable time can be judged also the time period fifth house from the fifth house and upachaya sthanas which you have taken example earlier the achievement of success authority highest post success in election starting one's own business can be judged <coughs> sixth house from the sixth house its upachaya sthanas the means of earnings money how much money you can earn or what kind of means you use for that what is the favorable period etc sir so you can judge seventh house from the seventh house and its upachaya sthana the sexual relationships with the opposite sex and other than marriage partner foreign relations wet comforts etc so can be judged because it is the 12th house actual 12th house in zodiac 
ethos. From the ethos, it superhouses details about the individuality and the personality can be confirmed. Ninth house, from the ninth house and Pucha houses, the happiness from relations and inheritable property also can be judged, which we have already seen in the previous examples. Tenth house and its Pucha houses, we can find out which is the third house, actual third house. Courage, brothers, sisters, writing of books, contacts, agreements, publications can be judged. See, so, yeah, the, the Karakatvas of that particular house are not changed in the natural Jodhya. But when you want to consider them while using Upachaya Sthanas, you have to take the Bhava, go to the, the Karakatva of that house and then do it. That is what you have to understand. 11th house. From the 11th house, it's Upachaya Sthanas. Anything regarding land or property. This is actual 4th house related Karakatvas home comforts and one's vehicles, etc., one's own house, etc. Twelfth house. From the twelfth house and its Upachai houses, any matters revolving around children, etc. Because twelfth house, if you look at the sixth house, is children. From the twelfth house, if you look at. See, in the natural zodiac, if you look at the twelfth house, is Pisces. From there, the sixth house is actually the fifth house. Correct? So, children and other related matters can be. From there, you can take Mupachai Sthanas and then you can judge. By using this method in this way, the whole life can be assessed with a detailed amount of accuracy. You will get better results, better understanding, and can give better predictions. Remember that these significations are the same as indicated by the sages for the sixth house, sixth house from these houses. It is actually told by sages. It is not a invention or you know uh, something else, a new thing. It is the same thing we are reinterpreting and repeating that's all thank you very much i completed my presentation with two parts